Hi everybody, Joey here again and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to build an overhead aquarium sump. Now what is an overhead aquarium sump? Well, it speaks for itself. It's a sump that goes above your aquarium. Now you might be wondering what's the point of putting a sump above your aquarium? Well, simply put, not everybody can have a sump below their aquarium, but they still want to have the benefits of having filtration done within a sump. When having a sump below your aquarium, you are probably going to have to either drill your aquarium or purchase or build an aquarium overflow to get the water down to that sump. The overall cost of a sump below your aquarium can actually add up as well depending on the style that you're building. You'll also need a large aquarium pump which can add to that cost as well. Now in this video, we're going to avoid all of that. The sump that I'm going to show you how to build will cost you less than $30 for everything including the pump. So let's start off with supplies. Let's start by talking about the actual pump itself. Now the reason why we're saving so much money on the pump is because we actually don't really need a large aquarium pump. We only need a small power head. How small depends on the flow you're going to want to put through this sump. However, a medium sized power head should only cost about $15 on average. You're also going to need a window sill planter. These are plastic and commonly available. They're going to cost you around three or four dollars depending on your size that you get. They come in a wide array of sizes from two feet to three feet to four feet. And that is pretty much what I have found. Now in this video, we're going to be using a two foot version for this example. You're also going to need some lighting diffuser and you'll also need some zip ties. You're also going to require some bulkheads. Now, depending on the size of a uh, filter that you're building and the amount of flow you want to put in it will depict the size of the bulkheads you're going to need. In this example, I'm just using the small bulkheads that I used from the how to build a canister filter video. They're the same type. You're also going to need a spade drill or some form of a hole saw to drill the planter to get your bulkheads in. You're also going to need to get the water to the top of the uh, to the top of the aquarium to get into the sump. We'll do this with the power head, but we're going to need to attach a hose to that power head and run that hose to the top of the sump. I'm just going to be using some vinyl hose. I'm also just using a maxi jet power head because of the output on it allows me to simply slide over a hose and run that hose right up to the top of my sump. So that's the supply. So let's get started with the actual build. Starting with your planter box, you're going to want to drill holes where you want the bulkheads to be installed. Now where should you install those bulkheads depends on where you want your water level. However, the higher up on the planter box, the better. The reason being is because we want to keep everything submerged in case the power goes out or you unplug the pump, especially your heater if you plan to put your heater in there as well. So what I did is I simply drilled near 75% uh, of the height of the actual planter box, I went ahead and drilled two holes for my bulkheads. Now, depending on the size of bulkhead you use, you might only drill one hole. I installed the bulkheads as normal with the gasket touching the inside where the water will be. This creates a watertight seal so the bulkheads don't leak. I then needed to create some sort of a contraption to mechanically filter the water before it enters the sump and gets biologically filtered. So what I did was took my lighting diffuser and I created a small tray and I zip tied it together and it basically holds the mechanical media above the water surface so it could be mechanically filtered first. Now cutting your diffuser is actually really easy if you just use some wire cutters. I also noticed that within the planter box, it's sort of stepped and sloped in. So I had to adjust the actual lighting diffuser to fit in there snugly. Once it did, it sits in there well and doesn't move. Now I can take some filter floss and set it right on top. So that's it. That's pretty much everything you'll need to do to that sump. Now we can install our heater. With the heater though, we don't want any of the media touching it and creating hot spots on the heater, which will lead to problems down the road. So we'll need to protect your heater in some way. What I did is I put a simple heater guard over my heater, but if you don't have a heater guard, what you can do is simply build a small cage out of that lighting diffuser that you'll have left, and you'll have lots left, and uh, protect your heater that way. Finally, install your media. Now for media, I suggest using 
uh, some sort of a centered glass or ceramic media since this is going to be a submerged sump. Now we can go ahead and install it on the aquarium. Now the aquarium that I installed it on is probably going to be a bad example because it's not really a common tank. What you're going to run into is where to place it on the top of your tank. Now most aquariums have glass lids or an open top. What you'll want to do is get a couple of supports in the form of thin pieces of wood like 2 by ones and run them the width of your tank, set the sump on the back and, or on top and push it to the back. This will sit uh, and support it quite nicely and it's not going to go anywhere. However, you might be worried about the weight of this when it's filled with water and media. A two foot version I weighed mine was only 13 pounds. That was filled with water and had over three pounds of biological media in it, which filled the entire box. 13 pounds on top of your aquarium is not that much weight. So with the sump on top of your aquarium, you can go ahead and install the uh, pump. What I did was I installed my max jet near the surface of the water because it's not really designed to pump that high, although it will pump a couple of feet in height. I ran my hose from the actual maxi jet up to the top of the sump. To hold it in place, I just clamped it with a clamp. Now I could hard uh, plumb this in with a bulkhead and that would uh, be one way to do it. However, I felt with the clamp it wasn't permanent and I can adjust it however I want. It is also easy to remove and maintain that filter in case I ever need to take it off the tank. The drains. If you have an open top and don't mind the waterfall sound of the bulkheads draining the water, then that's great. However, if you do, simply install a couple of hoses onto those bulkheads and run them into the water. And that's it. So how does this work? Well, the water is pumped from the power head up to the top of the aquarium sump. It's mechanically filtered through your filter floss and then the water is forced to flow through all of your biological media and in the process it's heated as well. So that's it folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I hope you learned something from it. I definitely want to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.